Okay. We'll start with a tennis ball. This is Iron's tennis ball for the day. Now it's gonna come back on us. Where'd it go, bud? Hello, and welcome to the Once Upon a Corgi podcast slash YouTube channel. This is a crafty puppy interrupted podcast coming to you from Southern Connecticut. I am your human host, Gabby, and you can find me everywhere online as Gabigales and on my hand dyed yarn at Once Upon a Corgi and onceuponacorgi.com. I don't know if you can see him, but Iron has his tennis ball here today just for looking. No throwing. What? You just want to hold hands? Yeah. Is this how we're going to do this the whole, whole time? What? It's on my bag! <gasps> This is not how I was supposed to start the podcast. No, it's okay, bud. I probably spilled something in it. This is episode 89. I'm going to try and remember to say these. You can find all the show notes for this episode and most other episodes below the video, wherever you are watching this. I'm trying to remember to put them up on Ravelry, but it's just sort of fallen to the wayside at the moment. We do have a Ravelry group, uh, the Once Upon a Corgi podcast under the groups tab in Ravelry. Yeah, bud. I have some tea here, but it's still very hot, but I really want to drink it. Before we get into the crafting, no, don't trample it. Before we get into the crafting, I do have some events coming up. They're all Once Upon a Corgi handmade yarns related. So the 23rd of February, which is next weekend from 3 to 9 p.m., Rebecca from Fuse Fiber Studio and I are having a pop-up shop in her studio in Avon, Connecticut at the Farmington Valley Arts Center. All the information will be linked in the description. So if you are in the area and want to stop by, we will be there all afternoon slash night. We do have a trunk show coming up in March as well, which feels weird to say. Please don't put that in the yard. Um, my show notes are over here, so I keep looking that way. That's why. We'll have a trunk show at the yarn store knit locally March 23rd from 11 to 4 and the Friday night before around 6 p.m. We're going to do a little preview party wine and cheese night as well. So if you are in the Gaithersburg, Maryland area and would like to come see us in person, we will be there. Uh, once we get into March, I will start announcing the April shows, which are, we have a trunk show and we have Connecticut Sheep and Wool, so keep an eye out. I believe that is it for administration stuff. N nothing going on podcast-wise. Uh, we're still trying to get back into the swing things after a spotty January. So let's get into the crafting bit. Start off with what am I wearing? I am wearing the Alaska Pullover by Caitlin Hunter in My Hand Eyed Yarns, Once Upon a Corgi, in Tomorrow I Shall Be Featherless. Um, the feather and second part is Insufferably Damp. The background for the crosses is Ghoul Hunter Woodlands of Wear, and then I use Nightmares Plus 10 for the body. You're very cute, but you are very low. You are! You're rolling around like a crazy person! like a crazy person. Whew, pups. I don't have any finished objects to show you this week. Again, uh, we are getting close though, I promise. I swear, we're finishing things. The closest thing I have to a finished object is a bobbin, so I guess we'll start off with that. Now the dogs are play fighting. So the fiber I am working with is the Ensign Brook Farm, which is a merino and romney sheep lamb roving. Uh, a friend of mine got this at Connecticut Sheep and Wool, I believe. And I'm doing a, tra a traditional three ply with it. So this is the fiber unspun. It's just this beautiful two-toned candy cane, light gray and brown roving. I split the braid into three even sections and weighed them out. And I have spun two of the bobbins. I hope this is in focus. I, I'm hoping. Uh, I am aiming for a fingering to sport weight as a three ply. I believe most of my singles are a lace to fingering weight, so we'll probably get more of a sport to DK, which is totally fine. I am spinning this for a friend who wanted to learn how to spin, realized she didn't want to learn how to spin, and then asked me to spin the fiber for her. Uh, I am spinning this on my honey and ply blue bonnet spinning wheel and this is just the Ashford 
um, Lazy Kate I got off the Woolery.com and I believe all my bobbins are from there too. So this is chugging along. I'm kind of getting the spinning bug back, which I'm very glad out because I would like to spin through my stash within the next two years. I think that's my goal. I don't have a huge fiber stash. I do have two fleeces that I need to finish processing slash get out to be processed. But I do have a lot of braids that are beautiful and I would like to spin them into something and knit with them. I also need to knit with my hand spun. Granted, there's only like two skeins in my whole stash. Maybe less. There might only be one. So that is my spinning. I've lost the bag now. Ooh. I'm hoping by the end of March I can show you a finished hank of hand spun. I'm going to close the blinds because it just got real sunny out. Real quick. So I have worked on my electric love shawl, but because I'm in the, I'm in brioche, because I'm in brioche forest, I, it doesn't look like I've done much, so I will show you that. Don't. Do not yell. Do not yell. Where'd your ball go? Where's your treat ball? Did you leave it in the living room? But in the meantime, of all the puppy interruptions, I was not lying about that. Oh God. I have been chugging away on my shady side pullover. Is this backwards? Yes. Which is a, another design by my friend Sam, and this is coming out next week. Yes, next week. I'll have the date down here. I swear. I am doing a test knit for her, and I've been enjoying it a ton so far. I am using my hand dyed yarn in Mama on my Audrey base, which is 100% uh, Superwash BFL and Fig Lace, which is a 70-30 uh, Kid Mohair Silk Blend in the colorways Moonlight and the black is Nightmares Plus 10. I finished the first sleeve after some trial and error. Uh, I knit it according to the pattern and then we realized that the pattern graded it down too far, so we um, got rid of some decreases. And I did a full length sleeve, so the cuff comes to about the base of my thumb for a nice slouchy oversized sweater. And I've picked up and started on the second sleeve. Oops. And I'm ripping all the stitches off. And we're just chugging away on it. I still have to do, it's a folded rib brim. Nope, folded, nope, collar. It's a folded collar. Oh, that hurt. I still have to um, pick up and do that, but I think I will get this done within the next week or so. I'm hoping I can get to the end of the decreases on the arm tonight. I think that's pretty doable. I did two, four, six, eight, um, almost all of them the other night. So, let's see. Oh, no, I don't know. Eight, nine, ten. Oh, yeah, we're, we're halfway there. So we did half the, um sleeve decreases already and it's chugging along. It is a split hem um, and I did I did two inches for the back and one inch for the front. The pattern calls for three in the back and two in the front but I thought I was gonna run out of yarn and then I dyed more yarn but I'm just gonna leave it. I like how it looks as is. Ugh. I'm so excited to wear this. I have to sneeze. Hold on. I am super excited to wear this. It's not as slouchy as the pattern calls for, but I don't like to wear things super slouchy anyway, so it's the perfect amount of ease for me. I'm so excited. And I am uh, planning on doing pre-orders for kits for the sweater um, in the colors that she designed it in, and then eventually I will branch out and do other colors. But right now, for my sanity, um, it will be in the main color was rose gold and marie cutie and warm and cozy on fig lace and it is beautiful it's being photographed today and i can't wait to see the pictures i'm so excited so this has been my main focus knitting and i'm super stoked about it i'm running out of all the words because it's about three o'clock in the afternoon so my brain is completely fried already it's been a weird week and this is oh god no throwing thing I am doing the helical knitting 
Uh, I don't know if it's picking it up on camera, uh, but I had to dye another skein and it came out quite different from the first batch. The first batch was a test knit, so I didn't... I wrote over what that recipe was as I was tweaking the recipe, so I got close to it, but I don't think I did like the right amount of things. So they are not crazy different, but pretty different. So I started doing the helical knitting in the sleeves to incorporate the new skein, which has turned proved to be cumbersome with the mohair and small amounts of stitches, but if it's gonna look good and if it's gonna make me happy, I'm gonna do it. I'd rather sit here and finagle three balls of yarn than not like the way the sweater turned out because there was a drawing change of dye lots. And that's why you try and buy all the yarn at the same time and why you alternate skeins. And it is happily living in my Mataru bag with the bees. I love this bag so much. I just can't wait to put more projects in it. I already have some sweaters, sweater quantities in mind for my next sweater cast on. I do have one sweater that's already on the needles that I tried to show you during the I'm sick podcast that I never released before I can cast on my other sweater, which I'm not going to say until I do the swatch for. Otherwise, if I say what it is, I'll probably won't cast it on. So I have cast on my, this is not a good picture of it, the Ishel by Katherine Clark. It was on, oh, it's right there. Hold on. I'll get it. I have cast on the Ishel Pullover by Katherine Clark from Pom Pom autumn 2018. I believe this was released, I think it was right before Rhinebeck. I'm knitting this on my hand dyed yarn on my Isaac base, which is 100% Superwash Polworth in the dark and gloomy colorway as the base and Nightmares plus 10 as the contrast color. So instead of navy blue, we have dark and gloomy. And instead of the gold, we have Nightmares plus 10. And I have cast it on. I've joined it in the round. I did the short rows and here we go. So this is the front of the sweater, no, back of the sweater. And there's our color work so far. It is teeny tiny, does not look like much at the moment. I do however have this super cute, I don't know if you'll be able to see it. I'm gonna try and focus it, but usually this never works. I'm gonna get up and look at the camera because I can't see what the camera sees. This little corgi polymer clay stitch keeper I got at New England Fiber Festival. I believe the name of the booth was Critter Creates or Creature Creates. I have to find the tag. I cannot find it off the top of my head. But she had little puppers, stitch markers, and so I had to get the corgi ones. They're so cute. I am knitting these on a size 5, 3.75 millimeter needles. The, uh, I'm using my US, my US Carbons, nope. Knitter's Pride, Nova's uh, interchangeables. And I'm doing size two, right? Did I print off the first page? No, no I didn't. Let me check. Because I didn't get gauge, I had to do some math. And so the closest thing, I don't remember what I did. Hold on, I wrote it down. I'm utilizing this tiny book that Amber gave me. Okay, so the closest thing I could get to gauge was a size five needle with this yarn. And I didn't want to go up to a six because it felt too airy at that point. I didn't want it to be too see-through. So I went, I'm going to knit size two, which is the 37 inch bust. Of the finished garment so it should probably give me like 36 and this one is supposed to be worn with positive ease so i think this will turn out to be about as snug as this sweater which would be perfect it is color work so i don't want it too tight because i'm afraid the floats would just mess it up so we'll see what happens 
I haven't had a lot of time to like sit down and work on this. It's very much a sit in silence or soft music in the background kind of knit, but I am very excited to get it going. One of the ladies in my knit group, we all started this as a knit along and she's the only one who has worked on it. Already finished the body and she's a wizard of knitting. So I'm, I don't know why I'm surprised at all. But seeing hers finished is motivating me to get mine moving. And now that shady side is almost done, I think I can focus on this a little bit more. I say that now. I'm probably just gonna cast on 17 sweaters and not, not work on anything. And this is living in my sheeple Harry Potter bag that I got from Erin Lane at, I believe, Stitches United? About two years ago? I think so. Did I get this at Stitches Midwest? I don't remember. I got it out of stitches. Huh. And that's all I've been working on. That's it. Not a lot. I'm trying to finish uh, all the projects I have on the needles that I've been on for longer than a year and uh, kind of cleanse my knitting palette while I get ready for 2019. But we did get some goodies in the mail. Did I start this? Yeah. From fabric.com, where is, which is where I do probably... 40% of my fabric buying, the other 60%, nope. Probably 50% is done at Affordable Fabrics in Rocky Hill, Connecticut, where everything is $2.99 a yard, or Joann's through coupons. Because Joann's does have some really good stuff. But Affordable Fabrics also has some really hidden gems. Fabric.com is very easy to search through, so I usually check there first. The first thing I got is, I got two yards of this, um, interlock knit. I lost the sticker. Interweave knit. It's a double brushed so it's super soft knit fabric with surprise surprise floral on black. It's so soft and it's got um my cocoa dress has this like cr not crinkled. It almost looks like a chevrony bubble pattern in the knit I believe. I think there's an actual name for that kind of fabric, but I don't know what it is. This one has almost like a cray papery texture to it. It's very lightly textured. You could barely see it until you get up close and feel it, but it's just this beautifully soft fabric. And my plan with this is to make the Agnes top by Tilly and the Buttons. I do 100% want a striped version of this because it is gorgeous. But I also think I would get a ton of use out of this. My plan is to do the v-neck version. I'm guessing with the gathers, I don't know if I have a choice on that. It doesn't look like I do, which is totally fine. And I think I'm going to do long sleeves. I don't wear a ton of long sleeves. There's a motorcycle. I figure if I do the long sleeves and I don't really like them, I can always make them shorter. So that is the plan. I am super excited to get into this. I have not washed my fabric yet. Um, my plan is to do that this weekend and get it ready for probably the first week uh, the week first week in March I will sew it because we do have the pop-up so things are gonna be a little busy for a little bit oh let's not fall off the chair the second thing I got from fabric.com is this stretch satin in the I think it's the wine color but it's this beautiful jewel toned burgundy oh it's so nice it's got this beautiful sheen and this will be the lining for my maxi tool fairy witch queen skirt and i'm so excited for it it's so soft and it's nice and cool so i don't think it's going to be too heavy if i wear it in summer months because you can be a fairy witch queen at any time of year obviously i'm super excited for it i feel like this would be a really pretty even just like a wiggle dress for weddings and stuff. So I might have to get some more eventually. Uh, I got, I believe three yards of this just because I needed the like extra $5 to push me over free shipping. So I have a little bit extra in case I need to use it for linings for any other dress. And I like having this just on hand for stuff like that. I'm so excited for this. I did, I did try and buy the tool for that dress. And they're both 
I just want to say that they're both called wine colored and the tool looked a lot like the satin on the screen. But it looks so purple. It's, I almost like, uh, I don't know how I feel about it. I really, I really don't. It looks so fuchsia-y, like a dark fuchsia versus that wine burgundy color that it looked like on the computer. I've been putting it in different sunlight. I've been putting it under different lights. I've been layering it. I'm not, I'm not sure if this is going to work with what I want. Let me unroll it a little bit. So I don't know if you can tell what color it is. I don't know what the screen looks like, but it's not exactly what I was looking for. So my plan for this skirt Ooh, ooh. would be to, you know, have the tool slightly gathered and over this fabric. It's close, but I, it's still, I think I would look like it better if the tool was a little darker and closer to that burgundy color. I did email fabric.com and they have been great in the past when I ordered fabrics from them and they come in and they're not, a, they're not at all what I thought they were going to be or um, feeling them in person. It's not the type of material I was looking for. They're great about returns. They're really good about exchanges. So I did email them telling them what fabrics I bought and what I thought I was going to get and what I did get and sort of asking if they had a suggestion since they are there. Uh, they haven't gotten back to me yet, but that's fine. It was only yesterday. So my plan is to hold on to this for now and then maybe go to Joann's and Affordable Fabrics and bring a swatch of the satin and see if I can find anything there. I did get the 108 inch wide tool to sort of make, oh God, the most of it. But if I have to do use a 40, 54 inch tool, I think that'd be fine too. The plan is to cut out a, I think three layers of the tool in a gathered circle skirt fashion and then do a circle skirt for the lining and I think that's going to give me the effect that I'm looking for. But we are still on the hunt for the perfect tool. Who knew? It'd be so hard to find tutu material in the perfect color. So those are the goodies that came in this week. My sojo is coming back a little bit. I did sew the clasp on my Lizzie skirt by Sew Over at London and I did re-sew the zipper into my double gauze Betty dress and wore it yesterday and I missed it. I have not finished the tulip skirt and I have not touched the shorts at all. Start small, it's all we can ask. And that is really what, did you just put my kneecap in your mouth? What, go get it, bring it over here, bring it here. And that is all I have been working on. I am very excited to get some long-term projects off my needles and kind of kickstart what I wanted to work on in 2019 as we're finishing up 2018 projects. I don't know what this was. So the rest of this will be shop update news and beyond crafting things. So if you're not here for either of those, thank you so much for watching. And if you are, let us continue. Sign up for a newsletter on the website, onceuponacorgi.com, which our update news this week is we did a facelift for the website. We redid the homepage, we shuffled around, uh, all the other pages kind of revamped everything updated the photos and i am very excited to say that it has been live for a week now and i think we got all the bugs out i think we figured it out we won't be having a yarn shop update this week we will be putting up the pre-orders for the shady side pullover sweater kit i will have um I'm going to be doing them only on the Marie Cutie and Fig Lace base and as of right now just in the rose gold and warm and cozy colorways but I will be doing the pre-orders by sizes so you'll just select the size that you would knit and that will be determine the amount of skeins. I believe it's three skeins for almost all of the sizes and then the last four sizes require four skeins of the main color. I will double check and I'll put it all in the description as well as a link to the Ravelry page when that is up. Other than that, we are getting ready for the pop-up shop with Rebecca from Fuse Fiber Studio. We have a ton of fingering weight yarn coming. We're going to be bringing almost 
a little bit of every base. We're gonna bring a bunch of tweeds and we are coning up a ton of DK weight for sweater quantities or a, oh, I forgot the name of the hat pattern. She's knitting a hat pattern. What, can you please stop trying to put a tennis ball in my fabric? She will have a color work hat pattern uh, there as well. So we're going to do a ton of DK weight colors. I don't, I should have ended on DK weight. Yep, should have done that. And I am super excited for that. It was a ton of fun last year and we had a blast getting to sit and knit with people. We had snacks, we had wine, we had sparkling water. We had so much yarn. So this year we were hoping for more yarn, more snacks and more good sitting and knitting and chatting with people. So if you're in the area, please do stop by. I have a blog post on the website with the address for um, the Farmington Arts Valley Center. And I'm going to try and remember to put up restaurants in the area in case you were driving from a distance and would like to stop for dinner or, you know, just want to explore Avon. It's a nice part of the state, I will say so. So I'm excited for that. And then we're done with February, basically. That's pretty much it. And then March. March is going to be a busy month. I'm very excited for it. We've got a couple wedding things that we have to do. We have to have the bridal party party. So everyone in the bridal party can meet each other because not everyone knows each other. There's just so many people, so many coordinating things. Ugh. And next month, the signups for the first skein yarn club which is a three-month yarn club inspired by the black mage series by rachel e carter will be going up next month but i will remind you closer to that date i just remembered and i got really excited for it so that is it for shop update news again if you would like weekly updates on this outside of the podcast or instagram you can sign up for the newsletter if you scroll all the way down to the bottom of the home page there will be a sign up form for you or if you follow us on instagram I try and post daily, if not every other day, about yarn pairings, what's going up into the shop, and other fun things happening with Once Upon a Corgi. This is now the Beyond Crafting section, so it's sort of what we've been up to the past week or so, and if you were not here for that, thank you so much for watching, and if you are, we're almost, we're almost at the end, guys. I promise. It has not been a very exciting week. It's been a lot of work finagling and planning and figuring things out. It's been, it's been a weird week because we had a snowstorm on Tuesday and Jake was off for part of it. So my whole work schedule kind of got pushed around in a weird way trying to prepare for the snowstorm. And then also wasn't expecting Jake to be home because I didn't have his schedule in front of me. So his days off were a surprise, I'm home. I need to eat and you have yarn everywhere. So that's been this week. Trying to get back on a schedule I had made 2019 goals. I don't know what that was. Oh, it was my accountant's business card. Okay. So I thought I made a list of nine goals in 2019. Uh, it turns out I didn't. It was literally just stuff. I think I just started a to-do list on the front page. I do have two goals for 2019 and one of them is to wake up before 7 a.m. every day, which I have not done except for three times this year, and to try and pay off two student loans. I think we're gonna back that off to one student loan, but if I can do one, I'd be really happy. If I could do two, I would be ecstatic and very impressed. The rest of this is really like go through the prize bin for the podcast, make pants, organize your desk. So I don't think I, I did not do this right. Although, you know, that could be a really easy <laughs> nine in 2019 kind of thing. Right, bud? So our goals this week, because we did not make any 2019 goals besides making things apparently, is to fix our sleeping schedule. These are my intentions. I'm purloining this from Forever 35. I used to keep my phone charging on my sewing desk because my sewing desk is over here and I sleep way over there. So I can't stay up all night watching Instagram stories or browsing Pinterest or doing useless time-wasting things on my phone when I should be trying to fall asleep. And then when I wake up, I just immediately lay in bed and browse Pinterest or Instagram or Twitter, and I don't actually get out of bed for like an hour. So my goal this week is to start charging my phone on my sewing desk again and getting out of bed before 7 a.m. I always find that if I'm at least up and have the dogs let out before 
7.30, I can start my day feeling a little bit better instead of lounging around until God knows how late and then realizing I need to eat something, but it's already lunchtime, so why even bother kind of thing. So that is my goal for this week. No, we'll see how well I do next week. There we go. My other goal is to finish the shady side pullover and get ready for the pop-up. Uh, having my whole year planned out has really helped my stress levels, but at the same time, I now feel like I need to constantly be getting ready for the next thing. So I think I need to write down a schedule on top of those schedules to figure this out. Is this making any sense? No, I'm just rambling at the camera now. I'm just rambling, couple up. All to say, we haven't done much. We did have a lovely Valentine's Day last night, which was Valentine's Day. Jake was working. I don't celebrate Valentine's Day. So it was a perfect night to hang out with friends, watch The Office, drink Prosecco, and eat Chinese food. And it was the best night of the month. I'll say it. Well but And I'm very excited for this weekend. I'm going up to a friend's house who I usually see once every six months, but now we've been hanging out about once a month which is super great to play the card game I posted on my Instagram. I forgot the name of it, something unicorns. I don't want to go get it because then I'll just sit here and show you all the cards. But I'm super excited. Jake and I played the other, wow, I said excited. I'm looking forward to playing this game with them. It was a fun game with two people, but I think it's going to be better with more. And with that, and if you can't tell by the grumbling, I think it is time for us to go. Is it, bud? Is it podcast overtime? Audrey and the producers are giving me the death stare. So with that, I will see you guys next week. Thank you so much for watching and supporting the shop, supporting the podcast, and continuing to watch every week. We'll see how next week goes. Maybe I will have a finished object for you, fingers crossed. And we'll see if I wake up before 7 a.m. Please don't put the tennis ball in the lighting equipment. It doesn't go there. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.